A new Congress is set to take office in January, and with that comes leadership elections. With the Democrats flipping the House of Representatives, that means that leadership posts will be shifting across the board. Here to tell us what to watch for in these leadership races is Talking Points analyst Brandon Ross. Well, Elijah, there are certainly some things to watch out for when it comes to party leadership. There won't be any movement in the Senate. Republicans maintained and padded their majority, and no one in the Senate leadership of either party is leaving their posts. But as you mentioned, the House is flipped, and there will be plenty of movement there. The most obvious race to keep an eye on is the race for Speaker. Former Speaker and current Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi has already declared that she'll look to take her old job back. Pelosi first won the job after the Democratic wave election of 2006 and held it until the Tea Party wave thrust John Boehner into the speakership. No one has announced plans to challenge her for the spot yet, but there's a decent chance that someone will pull it up a fight. Should Pelosi win back the job, the line of succession would be straightforward in some cases and murky in some others. Congressman Steny Hoyer would almost certainly move from party whip to majority leader, but beyond him, there could be some tight battles for positions. Congressman James Kleinberg and Congresswoman Diane DeGette are duking it out for majority whip. Meanwhile, two members of the Black Caucus, Hakeem Jeffries and Barbara Lee, are locked in a battle for chair of the Democratic Caucus. On the other side of the aisle, the only true fight going on is for minority leader. Current Speaker Paul Ryan is retiring from Congress, so majority leader Kevin McCarthy becomes the Republicans' top dog. Now McCarthy, now McCarthy is currently the top dog, but he's facing a challenge from Jim Jordan. He's the co-founder of the House Freedom Caucus, and the Ohio congressman has never made a bid for party leader, but has received protest votes for speaker in the past. We'll know the outcome of that race very soon as Republicans are holding their leadership elections on Wednesday. We'll have to wait a hair longer for the Democrats. They choose their leaders on November 28th. The only, vote, the only post those two votes don't account for is speaker, as that vote's at the mercy of the full House when it reconvenes with new members in January. So, Brandon, if there's going to be a challenge to Nancy Pelosi, who's it going to be? Who should we be looking out for? Well, I think if you're picking a name, you have to look at Tim Ryan. He's a congressman out of Ohio. He's a little more moderate, and he's trying to drag the party a little bit closer to the center. And on the flip side, you could also see a challenge to the left of Pelosi. Pelosi is seen as sort of a more of a party elder who hasn't really conformed to the times. You might see some more progressive challengers with a little more flesh blood try to take the mantle from her. Now, for House Minority Leader, wide open race with Paul Ryan's retirement. Who do you see getting that post? I think Kevin McCarthy is the heavy favorite. Like I already mentioned, he is currently the majority leader in Congress, obviously now going to be in the minority, but he has a stable hold. Jim Jordan is kind of laughed at a little bit as the House Freedom Caucus chair. T people tend not to give them a lot of attention, but Kevin McCarthy, very well entrenched in his post, likely to take the spot there. So which of these two races is more competitive? Well, I'd say of these two races, the more competitive race will probably be that House minority leader race. But as I mentioned, Kevin McCarthy probably still has that pretty much in the back. Pelosi could get a solid challenge too. You'll probably see some good fights from people, but in the end, she'll probably take her old job back as well. Now, Pelosi was the first female uh, Speaker of the House. Does she keep that post? I mean, there, like you said, there's a flack from both sides, from the more moderates, from the more liberals saying she's not doing enough. In the end, does she remain the next Speaker of the House? It seems almost certain at this point. Like, like I said, no challenger yet. There's likely going to be a challenger. It could be a fight. But I think Nancy Pelosi has well entrenched herself with party leaders, other members of the party. She's shoring up. There are a lot of newer members of Congress who are a little bit more iffy on her. But she's very known to whip the votes and get everything she wants. So I think she's proven to her party she's an effective leader, and she'll retake the mantle. So what's she going to have to prove again if she wants to get this post again? I mean, you talked about those people who are going to try and run to the left of her. How is she going to be able to adapt, or is she going to continue running the same platform that she's always run? Well, I think she's got to appease the younger members of the party. There are a lot, like I said, a lot of fresh blood in Congress, a lot of younger women, a lot of younger Congress people in general trying to drive the party a little bit more to the left. She might have to shift some positions. She might have to appease them a little bit. But I think at the end of the day, she's proven that she has the leadership skills, and she will really get a mantle hold of those votes and take back the speakership. All right. Okay. We'll leave